I'm on and going right now. So that thing is my voice at the bottom. All right. All right. I'm uh, Donnie Glazer, and today I'm going to be talking about um, the games that the new Chalmers played. And so um, this is what we hope to learn today. We're going to try and learn why games are important, and we're going to try and look at some games that the new Chalmers played in, uh, I think, are three distinct um, periods of time for them, pre-contact, post-contact, and now mo uh, modern day. And um, hopefully, um, by looking at these games, we can try and find um, what makes the new Chalmers unique through looking at their games. All right, so why are games important? Um, they're culturally, culturally universal. Every human culture has some aspect of games, um, whether it's games of chance uh, in the old Western times, the old Western frontier, athletic games in medieval times, feats of strength and bravery, or pastimes in uh, sub-Saharan Africa, actually, um, one of the oldest games, Mancala, here. Um, or, you know, whether this afternoon you're going to go play Call of Duty at home in your living room. <laughs> so, um, er every culture plays games, and it's something that is, I think, doesn't seem that important because it's fun. Games are fun. But it is actually a really important keystone of, of human culture. And it's actually these two pictures right here are really interesting next to each other because it shows that um, games are unique between cultures. So depending on what um, the culture holds valuable, what, what their morals and beliefs are, and also their access to resources, the games are going to be different between the cultures. I got another example right here. Uh, this the American sport has to do with you know, strength and athleticism and speed. It's very important to the American culture. And this is how the rest of the world sees football. As the two completely different sports, completely different rules, completely different balls, and, but they're known by the same name. And I think that's a really interesting point here, that, um, that it, it shows a lot of the, you know, what, what we hold valuable to us in our athletes. You know, the athletes that excel at soccer look completely different than athletes that excel in football. You know, you look at some of those linemen, huge, really strong guys, those are athletes. They would not make it on the soccer field. <laughs> you know. So, um, let's see where we're going here. There we are. So now we come to the new challenge. And, um, so we're going to try and see some of the aspects of the Neutralist culture that shape the type of games that they play. And um, so we're going to hope to see, by looking at what games they played, we're going to be able to zoom out and see a broader picture of the, uh, of the entire culture that is uh, the Neutralist. And the, the first um, game that I've came across that I thought was really important was uh, called the Hall, which is called, um, they, it's also known as the Bone Game. And so um, this was really important to Nchalnef because it's, um, it's a pastime. It's a, it's a fun game to play, but it was also, they used it as conflict resolution. It's really interesting to me um, hearing some modern day people talking about how this was played traditionally, where um, if two different families had a had a conflict, or if two different tribes, or you know, had a, had a conflict, they would actually play this game as um, instead of shedding blood, instead of fighting, and they would play the game. Whoever won, that was it, and there was no more no more fighting or dispute after that. And the game solved a lot of their problems with that. And it's a guessing game, and the the main focus is the these two white bones here. And you're trying to find where the white bones are. And I'll go, I'll go over, I'm going to try and go over the rules without spending too much time on, on the game itself. Um, there's two teams of two. There's a, 
um, a, a guessing team, the team that's trying to guess where the two white bones are, and then there's the bone holding team that they hide the bones in their hands and they, the guessing team has to guess where the white bones are. So there's 21 sticks, and this is used as like the point system. This is like your money or whatever. And so when you make a guess, if you get it wrong, you have to give the team holding the bones the, the one of your sticks. And so the first team to get all 21 sticks wins the game. And um, this could go on forever. These games could go on for a really long time because it's not like once you get a point, you have that point. It's like, you know, when you're the guessing team, you might have to give more sticks back than them. And so this could, this could go on for a long period of time, these games. So I'm going to use these two um, welcome carvings here to try and show you guys how it's played. So you have the two players. These two are on the, um, on the bone holding team. So they have the, the, the two sets of bones, four, four total bones. So there's four possibilities for where the, where the white bone can be. They can both be in the right hand. They can both be in the left hand. They can be on what they call the outside. Or they could be in the middle. And so the guessing team, they have to guess where it is by making hand gestures. And like, it was this if they thought they were in the, the left hand. It was this if they thought it was in the right hand. They had a symbol like this or like this if they thought it was on the outside. And then they went like this if they thought it was in the middle. And so um, a lot, these games were, they were really, um, really involved. There were a lot of you know, drums and music and singing and a lot of big gestures. And uh, they're, they're really uh, kind of almost art pieces. There's a, a video of... Um, um, a newer, a newer tribe. Not they're not New Chalmers, um playing it that I, I can post up on Canvas or something. But um, so the the object of the game is to win all the sticks. And so only the team that's holding the bones can score. And so that's like I said, when you when the guessing team guesses and they get it wrong, they have to give the team a stick. And but if the guessing team gets it right then they have to pass the bones over, and, then the, and now it's their turn to be the bone holder team. So uh, there's an interesting point that um, re reading about this book um, from, from Drucker, he, he kind of alludes to the fact that he thought that, that, um, they, that some people would cheat playing this game. And uh, I thought it was interesting that he put it like that because... Um, it's actually a, a huge cornerstone of the game is this fake guesses thing. So since you didn't say where you thought the, where you thought the bones were, it was, a, it was a hand gesture. There was a way that you could psych, you know, kind of psych people out into um, revealing where the bones are. And so since there's two players that are holding the bones, if somebody makes a fake guess and one of them, you know, they're like, oh, it's not it, it's not there. See, you know, and um, so it, it um, a lot of times it showed um, it it showed a lot of patience. So so it's really really important to have patience because you had to wait and make sure that it was actual like guess that they were making and not just trying to trick you. And so it was this was a game. There, there's no athletic ability to it. It's all you know, all upstairs, and you had to pay attention to small details. You had to pay attention, you know, kind of almost like in poker, you had to pay attention to, like, maybe somebody had a give, or maybe they're, um, you know, doing something that would indicate where the bone was. And so it was these kind of games that were really important to New Challenge in um, pre-contact times. So then, uh, then the white guys came. And, uh, and so they opened up all these trade routes like everybody's talked about with, with China, trading furs and trading beads and everything that, that the white people brought. But they also brought more games. So this is what I was talking about post-contact. Um, since they, they brought all these extra trading games and cards became huge 
became huge in the Ninchalmuth culture. We're playing, uh, playing card games and uh, also playing games like dominoes and more European, um, European games. So this led, you know, once these two cultures clash, led to um, lots of assimilation and lots of lo uh, loss of culture, um, a huge uh, blow to the Um But now coming up to modern times, it was actually very um, recent. In 2009, in Port Alberni, the Nuchalnith tribe started these Tlupich games. And it's, it's like a, it's like a Olympic-style events. Um, so it's a week-long, you know, collaboration. It's all over the Alberni Valley. They'll have, you know, some happening at this high school and some things happening over at this event center sort of things. And they have... Um, mostly modern athletic style games, but they do have some traditional games. So they're trying to blend the two aspects of their culture, the traditional and modern. So these are, you know, a, a small example of some of the things that they're, some of the sports that they're trying to do. And a, a, and a lot of them are, you know, popular sports like baseball and soccer and hockey and those kind of things. But then they have canoe racing, which is, which was a traditional thing that the New Challenge did in um, pre-contact times. So um, the Tulu Pitch games, like I said, what they're trying to do is meld these two ideas of their traditional pre-contact games, values, ideals, with the modern day um, culture that, that everybody lives in. And so they're trying to do that. I think that this picture is really good here because it, it um, they're, they're bringing up these kids who, you know, they play Xbox and they go to school and they're living a very European lifestyle. But you stick these kids in a canoe and it, and you, it makes their old heritage kind of real and concrete, something that they're sitting in and touching. And um, this is a way for the New Challenge elders to kind of bring... Um, bring the past back to life for a lot of these kids. And, you know, they want to come out and do these games because they get to play with their friends, they get to play baseball, they get to do what they want. But then they also get to do these, you know, traditional things that um, makes it, um, you know, makes their culture more alive and vibrant. So in summary, we learned that games are important, mostly because they're fun. Everybody likes to play games. So, um... I think a real kind of cornerstone of what I learned is that the types of games that somebody plays, I think, defines them. And so that you can look at yourself through all these different facets, like, you know, where you, where you work, you know, what kind of movies you like. But you can also look at yourself through this lens of what kind of games do you play. And I think that that, comes, that goes a long way in, in uh, uh, understanding a, a culture, and so these the the pre-contact games. This is more broad on New Challenge. The pre-contact games had a big emphasis on wits and and cunning and knowledge and patience and attention to detail and things like this. So um, there was actually not that much information in the Drucker books and a couple of the other books about athletic games that they played. So it was primarily games on wits. And these, these modern games, like I said, is a, is a really good melding between traditional and modern cultures. That's it. Let's see some questions. 